DVDs have had a special spot in my life for many years. In elementary school, I remember when the technology switched from VHS to DVD and thinking, what is wrong with VHS? I had seen hundreds of VHSs. They are cheap, they work well, and are perfectly fine. Why change up a good thing? But once I saw a DVD for the first time, the difference was clear. DVD was superior. There was no fuzz or lines at all. The audio was crisp and clear. There were bonus features directly on the disc that you couldn't see anywhere else. DVDs could hold twice as much video as VHS. There was no degradation when rewinding or fast forwarding. You could jump around to different scenes in the movie instantly. I was so foolish to think VHSs were fine. DVDs are truly amazing. The new media was first introduced in Japan in 1996. Over the next 10 years, it would reach a commercial peak in 2006, where it garnered $16.6 .6 billion in sales and maintained 64% of the US home video market. Every store started slinging DVDs, not just the classic locations like Blockbuster or Hollywood Video. Local grocery stores had multiple racks for the most popular rentals of the day. Drug stores had a small section of DVDs for rental or sale. You could even get free DVD rentals at the library. How they justified having a copy of Blue Crush as something educational, I will never understand. But I digress. This was peak era for DVDs. DVDs had completely taken over. Everyone was upgrading to the new format for movie and TV series viewing. Venturing down to Hollywood Video was a weekly adventure for our family. My parents allowed us to get one or two movies for the weekend to enjoy. It was exciting to peruse the aisles figuring out what to watch. Judging a movie based off the actors and director involved and looking at the back of the case to help guide our decision. It was a risk to pick a movie that turned out to be awful. If you made the wrong choice, you would be stuck with it all weekend. In the early 2000s, you could significantly increase your friend circle by having a respectable DVD collection. You could make many different friends by acting as a personal blockbuster for your classmates and associates. Oh, you haven't seen Joe Dirt yet? I'll have to come over and watch it with you sometime. Yeah, I have a copy of Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Uh, because my girlfriend wanted to see it, so it's not even really mine. Dude, you haven't seen Hostel? Yeah, it's one of the most messed up movies I've ever seen. Uh, it actually gave me nightmares, so... Um, if you want, you could actually have my copy. I don't really want it at the house. Playing sports, if you had a portable DVD player on the bus coming back from a school sports game, you were the most popular kid on board. People would smash three to a seat just to watch a five-inch screen of Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me, with one or two watching from the seats behind. If you had that portable DVD player, you were a king, a living legend. You would be able to pick and choose from amongst the eight people that wanted to watch the movie, and you could select your friend group for the evening. What a time to be alive. I still have many of the original DVDs I collected in the early aughts. Comedy films I watched with all my friends, seasons of my favorite TV shows I could now watch on demand. Even rare MTV DVDs you cannot find anywhere else. I'm glad I held on to these as a physical representation of my memories from the past. Some of these DVDs cannot be found anywhere else. Streaming platforms don't have them available. No other video format has had the incredible run that DVDs have had. They've been in big box stores since 1998 and can still be found in many locations, Walmart, Amazon, Dollar Tree, and until 2024, Best Buy. Many retailers are still selling DVDs after all these years, even with so many other viewing options available. There must be a reason DVDs have prevailed as one of the longest and most relevant media types ever created. Why is that? Well, you could pick up a Blu-ray for double the cost of a DVD, but that's not feasible for a lot of people who are on a budget. You could stream the film, that is, if you can find it on the many splintered streaming services out there. Then, you have to hope they offer it through your subscription, and not a pay-to-rent situation. Well, you could download it online illegally and risk having your internet turned off, or worse yet, the Federal Bureau knocking on your door. Or you could do what I do, look through your own collections of thousands of DVDs to find the copy of the movie that you already own. You have complete control of when and how you watch the movie. No connection to the internet or any streaming subscription is required. Your purchase from 15 years ago is paying you back every time you watch the film.
Most of the movies currently in my DVD collection I bought for very cheap. During the mid-2010s, many people were getting rid of their physical media. You could find them everywhere for a dollar or even less. I frequently would go to garage sales, thrift stores, and buy movies in bulk for a quarter or less. I also went to the Goodwill outlet, where you can buy what you find by weight of the product. Hundreds of DVDs would be donated there every day. I would just slip the disc out of the case and could purchase all the discs I wanted just by weight. I could get 10 to 30 movies every day I went. Every disc weighs 16 grams. I paid $149 per pound for general goods. That means each DVD I purchased from 2017 to 2020 from the Goodwill outlet cost me only four cents a piece. Yeah, four cents. I bought hundreds and hundreds of DVDs this way over multiple years. Times have changed though since 2020. Now the Goodwill outlet and many other secondary sellers have increased their prices on DVDs. The outlet now sells DVDs for $1.49 a piece. Value Village sells for $3 to $4 per DVD and Goodwill charges $3 per DVD. Walmart sells many new DVDs for $5 to $10 a piece, but the base bottom prices for DVDs may be over. Now you can still manage to get a good deal by using discount coupons, going on special days, buying in bulk, or looking for DVDs on OfferUp. Value Village has 50% off certain colors every day. You can get $3 DVDs for $1.50 a piece. Goodwill allows you to buy four DVDs for $10. Many garage sales and some mom and pop thrift stores still sell their movies for $1 a piece. The good deals are still out there, but it is getting harder and harder as time goes on. People are starting to recognize the value of DVDs and the true value of ownership. What does it really mean to own a movie? To own a movie means so much more than it sounds. When you stream a program on your smart TV, you don't own what you are watching. You pay for the privilege of watching from the library of the company who owns the media. Truly owning the movie means you are not relying on a corporation to watch a film. You aren't relying on the many streaming services to provide you with entertainment. You aren't paying an internet provider for bandwidth to watch a movie. You're completely independent from being monitored by international conglomerates. Your viewership is not put into an algorithm, some super quantum computer 4,000 miles away, to analyze what you are likely to watch next, or what you may want to purchase. You are left alone to watch your film or show in peace, without any connection to the outside world. When a movie studio makes a movie, for example, let's say, Adam's Family 2 Family Values, they used to play the movie in theaters for three or four months, then promote the movie to be released on home video or DVD, where you could then purchase the movie for yourself and watch it whenever you'd like. That would be the end of the commodification of that particular film. The end of the line for profiting off the movie. Besides the occasional re-releases of the director's cut or remastered version, but now when a studio releases a film, they profit from it in so many different ways. Release in theaters, early release on streaming platforms while still in theaters, release on DVD, Blu-ray, streaming online, available for temporary rental, available for digital purchase. They can sell you the same movie in 10 different ways. They will try to sell you the same movie as many times as possible. Streaming is the same as renting. Here's an example of how they can sell the same movie so many times. You love Pixar's Toy Story, so you bought the original VHS in 1998 for $12. The story of Andy and his favorite toy Woody is a certified classic. Then, the higher quality version comes out in 2001 on DVD, and you purchase that for $18. You now have access to bonus features you hadn't previously seen. Then, in 2008, there was a release on iTunes for the digital high definition version for only $12. The high definition allows you to notice the intricacies of digital and animation. Well, now it's 2016 and you don't use iTunes anymore. You forgot the password to your email, so you decide to pay for the Blu-ray of Toy Story for $20. This surely will be the final and most definitive version of Toy Story. Now it's 2021. The world has went through many changes, many trials and tribulations. You are too lazy to get off your couch to put a disc into the Blu-ray player. You've been coddled by the immediacy and instant fulfillment of modern life. You sold your Blu-ray player in 2019 for $7 at a garage sale because it was, quote, cluttering your TV console. You have fully embraced the motto, you'll own nothing and be happy. You take the easy route and pay for Disney Plus Premium Membership for $13.99. This is a payment I suppose you will pay in perpetuity for the rest of your life. Now, the journey is over. You can watch Toy Story and any Disney classic whenever you want. You just have to pay a mere 
$14 a month. But let's break down that cost for Disney Plus. The real cost, that is, adjusted for future inflation. Let's say for a 35-year-old, $19 a month times 12 months a year for 45 years left on Earth. What is the total? $10,260. That's $10,260 for a lifetime of watching mainly the Disney classics that you grew up with. That's a hefty price tag to actually not own anything. $10,000 is a lot for the main 20 Disney movies you actually like. You could have purchased all of them for $100, and that's for a lifetime of ownership. You could have saved over $9,000 in a lifetime and put a down payment on a new car. But that's life in the modern era. Ownership is poo-pooed as something that most people don't need to be involved with. The people at the top have things handled. Don't worry your little head about it. You can just sit back and relax, rent everything you use, and just stream what you watch. Why do you need to own anything anyways? In my opinion, if you don't own something, you will never have real control. You will forever be indebted to the corporation who is the owner. You will have no say in what they decide to do with the price or cost in the future. And you are only allowed to do what the owner sees fit. HBO, Hulu, Fubo, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, Sling TV, Max, Peacock, Paramount Plus, Netflix, YouTube TV, Apple TV, and many others are the ever-fragmenting streaming platforms that cost between $6.99 and $19.99 a piece. Now I know right now you are using your brother-in-law's account for Peacock, your girlfriend's Netflix, your mom's Disney Plus, but in the future, more restrictions will most likely only allow one user to access the subscription, or it will be limited to access for a local household per account. You will have to pay the cost to not even be the boss. Most basic price plans for the streaming services have constant and oppressive commercials. Commercials, those annoying little things interrupting the story and flow of the program you're watching. You may watch three hours of programming and get four commercials for Swiffer, two commercials for Chevy trucks, three commercials for Tide Laundry Detergent. I'm not interested in any of these products. It's just a waste of time. Even with the constant gathering of my information from advertisers, they still don't know me well enough to shuck a product I would ever consider opening my wallet for. If you continue to stream, you are agreeing to watch thousands of ads every year, taking months of your life away over a lifetime. DVDs are free of ads, and even with the 30 seconds it takes to stand up and pick out a DVD, you are saving countless hours of non-applicable ads from reaching your eyeballs. DVDs feature so much more than the program you get from a streaming service. If I watch Ace Ventura on Hulu, I would get exactly what I paid for, the movie, and nothing else. If I pop in my DVD copy of Ace Ventura, I will get the movie, the upcoming features for that year, the director's cut, the director's commentary, bloopers, deleted scenes, commentary from Jim Carrey, and sometimes even a hidden DVD feature called an Easter egg. An Easter egg is a hidden icon, which could have stills from the movie, secret scenes removed from the movie, or even a direct message from the actors of the film to the DVD buyer. Whenever I used to put in a new disc in the DVD player, I would always check for Easter eggs first thing before doing anything else. Searching around on the menu directory for anything that looked out of the ordinary. Checking every menu option and bonus features. It was an exciting and fun feature that only DVDs offered. By buying a DVD, you have locked in the version of the movie you want to enjoy, meaning it will never change. When you pop in the movie 10 years from now, it will be the exact same movie as you remember from years past. Disney, on the other hand, has visually or artistically changed many of their movies over the years, effectively rewriting history and their own product to fit a modern-day narrative. They have removed scenes, re-edited animations, removed entire movies and shorts from their catalog, embarrassed by the content of their stories, or upgrading the effects and graphics. In the live-action movie Splash, they added more hair digitally to the real-life mermaid to cover up her lovely lady lumps. In Lilo and Stitch, they removed a scene where Lilo runs and hides into a dryer, playing hide-and-seek. This was for child safety concerns. Following the Me Too movement, Disney removed a scene in the ending credits of Toy Story where Stinky Pete is flirting with some Barbie dolls, offering inappropriate advice. In the film Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, Professor Brown sings a song with a flair. 
It's removed entirely for some unknown reason. In one of my favorite Disney productions, Aladdin, they removed a verse from Jafar's song Arabian Nights, the one that says, where they cut off an ear if they don't like your face. It was determined to be too graphic and offensive to Arabian audiences, and these are only some of the many things that have been changed on Disney+. Plus. The other platforms have also modified their content or libraries from the original version. By streaming your content, the final product is never a completed piece of work. It can be forever changed to appease the lowest common denominator. They can forever update their films to fit whatever narrative is currently propagating in culture. They have complete control of how the product is remembered and can rewrite history whenever they like to. History has a way of repeating itself. We should not forget the past, even the bad things, because when you forget, you won't notice that it's happening again. By being able to constantly change a movie, you degrade the artistic and historical significance of that film. The original creation of the artist has been tampered with. The good, bad, and the ugly of culture and art should be shown in its original intended format to stand the test of time. It shows exactly where we were at as a society. I don't think human history should be edited. It is a disservice to future people. DVDs give you a way of keeping a real copy of history, the way things really were. Many of the videos in my collection are unavailable on streaming platforms. You cannot count on any movie you want to watch to be available at any given time. They are constantly rotating through movies. Watch before it's gone, or last week for this movie. I watched The Office for years and years on Netflix. I've probably seen every episode 10 times. They announced in 2019 that The Office would be leaving for some new streaming platform called Peacock. I haven't been this heartbroken for a product leaving me since McDonald's got rid of the snack wrap. This means if I wanted to watch my beloved Office show, I would need to pay up another $6 a month in perpetuity? Six bucks a month isn't so bad at first glance, but when you add it up, that's $80 a year with tax. And if you have Peacock for the rest of your life, you need to account for future inflation. So we'll average $100 a year for 45 years. That's $4,500 for a lifetime of Peacock. That's a massive price to pay to watch one TV show, not to mention the constant commercials for junk you don't care about. Psoriasis medication, Dave and Busters, Mazda SUVs, Planet Fitness, H&R Block, AIDS prevention, Cheerios, food, food trucks, NBA playoffs, diapers, etc, etc. What a deal. I'll pay $4,500 for years and years of commercials projected in front of me while I wait to see if Michael Scott's new paper company will get off the ground. <sighs> I could have bought the entire Office series on DVD for $45, literally one one-hundredth the cost of Peacock. Commercials take the flow out of any story or program you watch. It ruins the momentum and pacing of TV shows and movies. But we're so inundated with constant ads we don't even take notice anymore. DVDs allow you to break fear of this commercial tyranny. Not only do these DVD companies want you to pay, they want to show you three ads every half hour of varying length. Isn't there a better way of promoting your product than mass slinging unapplicable items to every person in the world? I think it's time we talk about some of the common criticisms of DVDs. I'm sure you've been thinking of several for the entirety of this video. Here are some common complaints. One, I don't have space for a bunch of DVDs. I live in a one bedroom apartment. Two, the quality of DVDs is simply not good enough. It looks low quality. Three, DVDs get scratched and then they don't work or they skip. Four, I don't want to have to get up and find a disc every time I watch a movie. 5. I don't have enough to buy every DVD of movies I want to watch. 6. Not every movie or TV show I want to watch is on DVD. 7. DVDs don't last forever. The information on the disc will degrade eventually. Let me address some of these common criticisms of DVD one by one. Number one, the space issue. I personally have a few thousand DVDs tucked away neatly into six large CD books. Each book holds between 400 and 600 discs. Even I don't have the room to hold all the cases for my movies. These can be found everywhere if you keep an eye open, often for $5 a piece or less. If you cannot lift a lot of weight, I would recommend the smaller capacity books to make it easier for you to move around. A book of 500 discs can weigh close to 20 pounds. Most people have the room required to at least own the top 500 TV shows or movies they want to watch or rewatch regularly, which I would highly recommend everyone to purchase. 2. DVD quality. Let's talk about the quality of the media we watch on a daily basis. The technological aspects of current TVs far surpasses the actual desire of the average consumer. We have available in the present day TVs that are capable of 8K picture quality. 
That's 33 million total pixels. Most people have 4K capable televisions, yet we watch most of our streaming content as a lower definition of 1080p. That is only a mere 2 million total pixels. We watch programming far lower than our technological capabilities all the time. The average person cares far less about the quality than the sellers of new technology will have you believe. The data used to stream 4K far surpasses what is needed for 1080p. 3 gigabytes per hour for 1080p, 7 gigabytes for 4K, and a whopping 3,600 gigabytes for 8K video. This is exponentially more bandwidth needed for a hardly noticeable difference to the naked eye. DVD quality is adequate for most viewers. If you watch on a TV size 48 inches or smaller, the DVD quality will look even better. And after a couple sessions of watching DVDs, you don't even notice the less definition as your eyes adjust to the quality. If you flip through YouTube Shorts or Instagram, some of the most viral content in the world is recorded or converted in a very low pixel quality. Some of the videos look like they've been recorded on a potato, and yet still they manage to get 50,000 likes, 1.2 million views, 2,000 shares. My point is, the average person doesn't think about the pixel quality of the media they're watching, but the content of what they're watching. And for all the audio files out there, almost all DVDs have 5.1 surround Dolby audio abilities in every disc. The audio quality is never in question when comparing to higher definition media. There is not a noticeable difference in audio compared to modern day streaming platforms. 3. DVDs get scratched. DVDs are prone to get scratched if you leave them on a coffee table or upside down on a TV stand. There is a certain level of responsibility when you have a DVD collection that you must accept before you start buying all of your favorites. DVDs potentially can last from 30 to 100 years when properly stored and handled. How the disc is stored and handled will determine the longevity of the media. Sony lists certain techniques to extend the life of your DVD. Always handle a DVD disc by the outer edges or center hole to avoid fingerprints. DVD discs should be stored in a dry, cool area. Make sure to keep dirt and other foreign objects away from the disc. Avoid exposure to excessive heat and humidity. Temperatures should range between 39 to 73 degrees Fahrenheit. That means if you store your DVDs in a storage unit, make sure it is climate controlled to not damage the disc. Keep the disc out of direct sunlight or ultraviolet light as this may destroy the information on your DVD disc. It is recommended that the discs be stored vertically upright as opposed to being stored horizontally over a long period of time. But I will say, if you do manage to scratch a DVD disc, there are ways to fix it if it's scratched lightly or even moderately. And it's not the fix we all tried in the early 2000s in my family, using this stupid disc buffer as some sort of cure-all. All this did was buff out our fingerprints or light smudges. Then we tried to upgrade to something called Skip Doctor, which was essentially a lightweight sander that grinded the disc's surface. But this often made it worse. There is a lot of junk out there that doesn't work, but there is a company out there that makes a great product I think every serious media collector should own. It's called the JFJ Easy Pro. I have personally owned and used this product since 2017. It's the best way to fix your discs. Most moderately scratched DVDs can be repaired in 30 seconds or less. I found that it has a 95% repair rate for all of the hundreds of discs I have fixed with it. It sells for about $200, which I know is not feasible for everyone, but for those who have a large physical media collection, I would highly, highly recommend it. It has literally saved me thousands of dollars in discs that previously did not work. Check it out if you're interested in the description. I have an Amazon affiliate link where I get a small portion of your sale, which goes to helping me make more content. Criticism 4. I don't want to get off my couch to watch a movie. This is a symptom of modern life. If you're not willing to walk 10 feet and open up a DVD booklet to pick out a movie to watch, then maybe you shouldn't watch a movie. Maybe you should go to sleep. And sleep is the cousin of death. I know the allure of streaming is great. You don't have to move and you barely have to move your finger. But some things in life are worth doing. But it's better for your circulation. It's good for you to get up and move every once in a while. You'll burn about four calories for every time you get up off the couch and pick out a DVD. Criticism five, you don't have enough money to buy every movie or TV series you want. Now, I understand this claim. Not everyone has money to buy DVDs of every program they wanna watch. I think in this situation, you should be more targeted in your DVD hunting. Only buy the TV shows and movies that are your absolute favorites. The ones you rewatch every couple years. Those are the ones you will get the most value for the price you pay. 
Be on the lookout at thrift stores or keep an eye out on eBay for a cheap copy. I believe everyone should have at least the top 50 movies or TV shows they love, which will help subsidize their independence from tyrannical streaming services. 6. Not every piece of media I want to buy is on DVD. While I understand that not every movie or program is available on DVD, I will say at least 90% of major Hollywood productions are. A plethora of old and new shows are available. DVD was pushed hard for 25 years, and every studio re-released their movie and TV show on it. Anything up until 2016 is surely to be on DVD, and a lot of movies are still being released on it. A lot can be found on DVD that is not available anywhere else. 7. DVDs don't last forever. In a couple decades, the DVDs could degrade and be worthless. Now, while it is true we don't know exactly how long a DVD disc will retain its information, the estimates range between 30 to 100 years, there may be a day in the far future where your discs do not work anymore. But don't fret. I do have a solution for this problem. You can rip your DVD disc directly to your laptop or home computer. There is a great program I use called WinX DVD Ripper Platinum. You can purchase this program I have listed in the description for a one-time fee of $66 for a lifetime of use. I love this program because it allows you total control of your DVD forever. You will always have a digital copy of your favorite movie no matter what happens to the disc. Whether flood, fire, degradation, theft, anything. WinX DVD Ripper Platinum allows you so many options for converting your movies into digital files. You can choose the aspect ratio, the size, the quality of the file, with or without subtitles, and even save bonus features. WinX DVD will allow you to watch all your favorite DVDs on your tablet, your computer, your phone, your laptop, or any other smart device you have. You can support me and this channel if you decide to purchase this program for yourself. I do receive a commission on any purchase you make using the link in my description. Thank you. The nostalgia for DVDs is great. As warm feelings for time past makes people yearn for a more simple time, there will always be some who buy DVDs for purely nostalgic reasons. They'll buy an old silver CRT TV from Offer Up and purchase a couple dozen early 2000 movies for display in their bedroom as some sort of living shrine to the Y2K era. This is a way to show their quirky and interesting personality in a unique way. A rebellion against modern life and cell phone addiction. A coup d'etat against the streaming platform forms and technology. This is a statement of their personality and aesthetics. I too enjoy the nostalgic properties of DVDs and would love to get a silver CRT with a built-in DVD player to watch all of my favorite films the way God intended. I personally love the hunt for DVDs. I am always thrifting and yard sailing anyway. This gives me a fun side quest to accomplish while I'm looking for the big flips. Sometimes I even find a rare DVD that has a value of $15 to $20. With that $15 profit from this rare skateboarding magazine DVD, I can find and purchase 15 new Hollywood films I have never seen before. It can be a free self-purchasing endeavor if you know what to look for. I can now look at a stack of DVDs and quickly determine what is common, what is rare and what could be worth some money. If I can find something that was never re-released on streaming service, that is a great sign. A rare concert DVD or collectible that wasn't sold everywhere. A magazine exclusive that only went out to the subscribers of the brand. An early release of a Disney DVD or first print of a Hollywood classic. These are sought after on eBay, and you can feed your DVD hunting with the rare DVDs you aren't interested in holding on to. I think the future of DVD collecting is bright. The more DVDs people get rid of, the more valuable and rare DVDs are becoming. I've seen it with my own eyes over the last 10 years. People are selling their whole collections at yard sales, donating to thrift stores, or just throwing away in the garbage. Any non-sold DVDs in secondhand stores are thrown away if they don't sell within a certain period. The amount of DVDs on earth are getting fewer and fewer. Anyone who has their own collection will rise in value naturally over the next 10 years. There is a small window now where you can still buy DVDs for a reasonable price. Once they stop making DVDs entirely, a day I hope will never come, the price of movies will go up even more. No longer will you be able to get a physical version of your favorite movie, unless you pay the exorbitant price for a Blu-ray. The movie studios and streaming platforms will have a checkmate, and you will be forced to use their avenues of distribution. There was a new movie I recently watched called Leave the World Behind. In it, 
there was a large-scale attack on the world's population. The government shut down. There was a breakdown of communication. The internet was broken apart. Supply lines were no more. A couple families were forced to live in a bunker underneath the earth. Modern life would never be the same for them. It was time to hunker down and live a simple communal life. In the last scene of the movie, there is a teenage girl who walks in front of the TV, puts in a DVD disc of the TV show Friends into the DVD player. The world around her has collapsed and failed, but she still has the power to watch her DVD whenever she'd like. With the power of DVD, you are in control. I'm currently in the process of backing up all my DVDs in a digital format. I have an affiliate link for the DVD Win X program that allows you to legally rip your DVDs onto your computer as digital files so you can preserve your collection forever. I'll even keep some of those DVDs on my phone for those long plane rides or when you don't have Wi-Fi. If you'd like to support this channel, please consider the purchase of WinX DVD Ripper Platinum to forever retain digital copies of all your DVDs. Thank you for watching everyone. I am so happy to provide you with more content on physical media, odd technology, and things I find at the thrift store. If you like this video, please subscribe down below. Give me a like so I know you like this kind of content and give me a comment so I can hear your thoughts. Thanks again. Goodbye.